Okay, so continuing with chapter 13, the statistics chapter for our applied math final exam. Number 16, it may be a little different on your uh, math Excel problem, but should be very similar. It says the graph shows the percentage of employees who take time off during one year because of COVID. So we've done this survey and have seen, ask all the employees how many days they took off or they've looked in their files or something, but they've compiled this data. And it says use the graph, and there's a, uh, also you need to know there's 8,150 employees at this company. So use the graph, it's been compiled into a graph uh, to determine the number of employees that miss one to two days that year. So in the graph, uh, it does tell us one to two days is 24% of the employees. So we should be able to take the 8,150 employees, and take 24% of that uh, to see how many employees that was. So it is a multiplication problem. 8150 times 24% or times 0.24, 1,956 employees took one or two days off work last year, according to this graph. Okay, number 61, uh, just helping you talk, talk through a circle graph. Now, uh, we didn't actually put this information into a circle graph. That's hard to do via the internet on Math Excel, but read more about that in your book. But it just said, if you were going to make a circle graph, with this data, how many degrees would you need to allow for this information? So it tells us that uh, this Sarah Baker spent $5,600 on expenses during one semester of school. So she spent $1,608 of that, of the $5,600, or 30% 30, 30 of her money she spent on uh, rent. So 30% or of the $5,600 of expenses was spent on rent. So on a circle graph, if you were to make a circle graph of how she spent her money, how many degrees would you allot for her rent? So we know 30%, that's basically a third of the circle, so you can kind of estimate what that would look like, but exactly how many degrees can be found by taking the percent, 30% times 360. Anytime you're doing a circle graph, you multiply by 360 since the whole way around the circle, 360 degrees in any circle. So 30% or 0.3 or 0.30 times 360, multiply that out, and that's what we're looking for. That would give you a number of degrees. That gives us 108 degrees. And so if you were actually going to do that specifically uh, for a project, you would want to get a protractor and get that exact amount as shown on the graph. Okay, moving down to 62, again, we're just trying to get just a, a, a taste of each type of graph, not go too deep into any one type, but just to, just to appreciate the different types of graphs that you do see in magazines your newspaper and such and that you may use in your career. So the next one is um, a histogram or a block graph where we, uh, we show how, how high up each one of these values is. It's just another way of displaying data, just like the circle graph and so on. All right, number 62, um, let me read to you what the, the information, what we're doing here. It says, use this histogram below to answer the following questions. And this histogram has the number of people uh, on the vertical scale, and this is the number of soft drinks purchased. So, for example, uh, two, two people purchased no soft drinks. This is the number of soft drinks. And this is the frequency, the number of people that did that. Okay, so it says how many people were surveyed? Can you figure out how many people were surveyed here? So there were zero pe uh, two people that served, uh, had zero drinks, so we've got two people. Uh, we've got two people that had one soft drink. We have ten people with two soft drinks. And then we have six people that had three, so six people there. And then for four, let's see, there's five people that purchased four soft drinks. Um, okay, then here uh, we have, I think that one was at three. Three people purchased five soft drinks. And then uh, one person bought six soft drinks. 
Okay, so that would be the number of people uh, going from that information. So adding that together to 4, that would be 14, plus 6 is 20. We just add all those numbers together. And it looks like 29 people. 29 people in total. Uh, 29 people serving. There were blank amount of people who purchased four soft drinks. So again, using that information, four soft drinks, that's this bar graph. Looks like five people bought four soft, soft drinks. So it's just a matter of this is just practice uh, interpreting the graph. The mobile class. Mobile always means the one most often used. What's the most often used? And, and there's definitely a distinct number that shows up here, two soft drinks. Most people with a modal class was two, two soft drinks. And there were blank soft drinks purchased. So uh, you, you then go through here and multiply. Uh, how many soft drinks does this make? Two people didn't buy any, so we get a zero from that. We had uh, two people that each bought one, so two times one, two soft drinks. Um, a bunch of people bought two soft drinks. Let's see, 10 people, two soft drinks each, so multiplying that's 20. Uh, for three, there were six people who bought three soft drinks, 18. There were five people that bought four, we're always multiplying here. Um, this is three, three times five is 15, and then that one person bought six soft drinks, so six. And then all that added together, I made a note if I did this right, that that comes up to 81. So there was 81 soft drinks purchased. And then it, it has us take that information into yet another chart and do a frequency distribution, the number of soft drinks and how many people. So at zero soft drinks, there were two people, and write that information once again into the uh, frequency distribution. Okay, uh, moving on. Number 63, another type of graph that you can see is a stem and leaf. Now this one's a little more specific uh, because we actually can see every piece of data in a stem and leaf. So I kind of like this. Um, so we've got two, three, four, five, and six down. Those would be our stem, our base numbers, and then we're going to put the leaves along side of that and that will help us count up how many, but in a specific way. So numbers that start with two, I've got 22, so I'll say two, two, 22. Uh, 27, so two and seven. 26, 2 and 6, 2, 5, 24, 26 again, I think that's all the 2's. So again, that's, that's the stem, the 2 is the stem, and then these are the leaves, and I can specifically see there's a 22, 27, 26, exact data, and I can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces of data that fit into that. So you could always make, almost make a bar graph or a histogram out of that as well. Okay, then we do the same thing for each number. So the 3, and we go into this 35, 31, 37, 33, and 37. And for the 4s, and I'll stop there, but that's the idea for stimulating. All right, next topic is mean, median, mode, and range. I want to go through what each one of those means. Uh, these are types of averages. So actually when someone says to average your grade, there's really four different ways you can average a grade. All of these are considered averages. Now normally what we think of is the mean. The mean is the most common one for us teachers when we average grades. We add them all together and divide by what's possible and that's probably what you would normally think of. Uh, so the mean is the adding and dividing by how many pieces of data. Like if you took four tests, you made an 88, an 87, a 42, and a 75. You add those together and divide by the four tests. That's the mean average. The median is your middle score, the middle score. Mode, like I mentioned before, mode is the one that occurs the most. And mid-range, you take the two on the ends and add them in half it. So you kind of average or take the mean of the, the lowest and the highest and add those together in half it. So mid-range. Okay, so number 64, we're asked to find what? one of those, maybe all of those. The mean, so we would add all these together, 52, 45, 32, plus 43, plus 53, plus 40, plus 56. 
Add those together and divide by their seven numbers. So it's divided by seven. And a lot of your calculators will actually do this. In statistics mode, you can just input the data and uh, get all kinds of information. Okay, I'm coming up with 321. Then I divide that by 7, 45, and it tells me, since it doesn't come out even, to round to the nearest tenth. So it's 45.85714, but tenths place the 8. I need to look after it to know whether to round up. The 5 rounds that up to a 9. So it's 45.9 for a part, the mean. Now, to do the median, you'll have to put your numbers in order from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. You'll need to uh, order those. So I've done that here, lowest to highest, and then pick the one in the middle. If there's not a true middle, if you have an even amount of numbers, you take the two in the middle and do the mean of those. So 45 is the uh, median. Uh, the mode, there was no number that occurred more than one time, so there's no mode in this one. And the mid-range is the lowest plus the highest, 32 plus 56 halved. So 32 and 56 is 88. 